Hey everybody, welcome to the Stock Car Spectacle. I'm Ian Jordson. I'm Mike Gamble. I'm Nick Kinzel. And I'm Dog Ratty Bush. Sorry, sorry. Right. You guys no, you, no, you're that. fine. You're fine. <laughs> Thanks for joining us, Dalton. Thanks for joining us again for another episode. We're going to be going into the Kinzel's classroom. So, Professor, take it away, bud. All right, boys. <laughs> Class is in session. So, for anyone who doesn't, we're going to try something new today. I was, we, I've been thinking about it, and we're still going to do the traditional five drivers, give them a grade. But instead of everybody giving their opinion on that one driver, I'm going to assign you guys some drivers here. I'm going to assign uh, two of you to each driver, and we'll try and kind of spice things up a little bit, kind of get away from the repetitiveness that I've been seeing lately. I don't like that in my classroom. I don't like repetitiveness in my classroom. So let's get let's get going here. First driver on my list is the number 11 of Denny Hamlin, P24. Denny just did not have himself a typical Martinsville day. Yes, I know that everybody dropped like no recovery for Denny, really no speed for him. Finished at 24th. I circled Denny to win this thing. I thought Denny had a great shot of winning it because Martinsville is such a good racetrack for him. So for Mr. Hamlin, I give you a D plus to an F minus right there. And so let's get let's get Mike and Dalton. Let's let's see what they got to say about this. All right, so, yeah, I'm going to agree. I'm going to have to go ahead and give that a failing grade. When uh, when a Joe Gibbs racing car runs that low, um, multiple laps down for a lot of the race, um, it, they, they expect to be the best of the best, not running 25th or so, 30th, somewhere in that range, multiple laps down. And then you add in the fisticuffs and uh, the Twitter jousting with Corey LaJoy picking on the backfiller cars <laughs> for a guy who goes down there and, you know, routinely overperforms in uh, the equipment that he's in. Uh, really bad look, really bad timing to run that poorly. Um, shout out to Corey once again, trapping Denny a lap down when he could have waved around. I thought that was hilarious. Uh, yeah, for me, failing grade. If I'm the professor, Denny, staying after class, homeboy. Oh, yeah. yeah. All right, so... First of all, Ian, I want to thank you for stealing my Denny Hamlin pick on our group chat the other night. Yeah. <laughs> you saved me from sucking, and I got a W. Anyway, uh, well, that's what Denny – back to Corey LaJoy. That's what Denny Hamlin gets for saying stupid things. Every time he says something stupid, it always comes back to hurt him. All right, now, uh, all seriousness, uh, I am very disappointed in the performance uh, that Denny Hamlin gave. I had lots of high expectations for him this, uh, this weekend, and that's because – Martinsville, one of his best tracks on the schedule. You always want to uh, pick Denny Hamlin to win every time you go to Martinsville or Richmond, Virginia. And that was just a terrible performance. And, and, you know, it's not just Denny Hamlin. It's the whole JGR team. They show up – all of them show up to the track with piece of crap breaks. They're trapped a lot down already. And I, I really don't know what else to say. It was just a disappointing performance for me for Denny Hamlin. So, yeah, here's, here's your F. <laughs> Hi, Mr. Hamlin. Unfortunately, I'll be seeing you after class. So the second driver on my list, he finishes one spot higher than Denny Hamlin, the 42 of Matt Kenseth. Guys, Matt Kenseth, I, I just don't know what to say about him at this point. He had his one top 10 run at Darlington. He's just been kind of, he's kind of just been in the way ever since. The speed of the 42 has just not been there. He's lacking everything. I know not getting to practice this car is really hurting him, but I kind of expected a little bit something more, especially if he's going to come out of the gates and score that top 10 at Darlington. And then I know he's going to some difficult racetracks, but Matt Kenseth is just kind of like a moving chicane at this point. Always seems to find himself in the way. For Matt Kenseth, I also am going to give him a D. So Ian and Dalton, what do you got to say about this one? All right. <laughs> Um, yeah, Matt Kenseth. I mean, when we came back from the pandemic, I guess we went to Darlington. He got that, what? He got top 10, right? At Darlington? Yep, yeah. Yeah. And then ever since then, he's just been in the way. So, yeah, he got an A in his first race, but ever since then, he's been failing. So, yeah, I got to go with you there. I'm going to go a little bit worse and give him an F just because championship caliber driver. Yeah, he hasn't been in the seat for a couple years, but. God damn, this boy should know how to wheel this car to a top 15. His teammate, Kurt Busch, is smoking him. Oh, so, yeah. yeah, 
F. F for the 42. <laughs> yeah, okay, so <laughs> I had low expectations for Matt Kitson to begin with, to be honest with you. I mean, when we came back uh, from the coronavirus pandemic back at Darlington, I I remember we all in the group chat were asking, you know, where, where will Matt Kitson finish? I said 28th, 29th. But surprisingly, he got a top 10. And I'm like, okay, maybe, just maybe, he could probably make something happen in that 42 car. But right after Darlington, it just went back to downhill for him. I, uh, and, and again, I had a low expectations for Matt Kenseth. I, I'm kind of disappointed in the way he's running with that car. Kurt, Kurt Busch, like you said, he's the dominant uh, Chip Ganassi racing car. There's no doubt about it. I, I got to get Matt Kenseth to F2. He's not performing that. Kyle Larson uh-huh. performed a lot better in that car than he's done so far, and that's kind of saying something. So I, I got to get the F- to Matt Kenseth there. Well, Mr. Kenseth, I'll be seeing you after class two. I think this is the first time in a good while, long time that two drivers have failed are going to be staying after class. Yeah, man, yeah, we're going to on all the drivers drive. that are in the back row of class asleep during the lesson right yeah. now. <laughs> Nick's starting Ooh. to form up the NASCAR Breakfast Club. <laughs> yeah, right? <laughs> all right. The third driver on my list, I, I, this isn't biased or anything, but I got to go. Matt the Benedetto in that 21 car, solid P7 run for him. Uh, so Matt, Matt had some bad luck going this, some bad luck going this season. Like last week at Atlanta, he blew a tire with six to go when he was running 11. But I, I, I really do think that ever since Matt stepped into this 21 car, he's gotten better as a driver. And that team, is, we went from Paul Menard, who didn't really do anything, to Matt the Benedetto, who's like constantly up there. He can start races well. I, that team just can't seem to put together a full race yet. But last night was definitely a step in the right direction for that team. So for Matt DiBenedetto and the 21 team, for they, they really did put a full race together, in my opinion, last night. He was 16 at one point in this race. And then when we at that first commercial break, he was 16. And then all of a sudden, post-commercial break, he's like running eighth. And then he was as high up as fourth in the race. So for the 21 team, I got to give him a solid B plus because they are – starting to hit on their stride, and I think they could sneak their way into the playoffs on points. So let's go Mike and Ian on this one. Okay, so remind me, he got stage points at least once in that race too, right? Stage points in both, one. both stages, I believe. Uh, not, stage two? No, not yeah. stage two. He finished uh, ninth in stage one. That's the only stage points he got. Okay. okay. I'm going to go a step above. I'm going to say an A minus. So for a driver um, in a newer situation, as you know, uh, being with the 21 this year, um, you know, to come out in a race like that, get stage points and have a top 10 finish, not all that far away from a top five finish, even that's a hell of a day that, you know, that's something you need to celebrate. You know, we've talked about Maddie D and that team, you know, they're definitely moving in the right direction. I agree with Nick. I think he'll be either the 14th, 15th, or 16th driver in the playoffs if he doesn't get a win and, you know, lock himself in. So, and, you know, days like today help solidify that. You know, regardless, you're going to have those days where things don't work out your way. So you, you need a day like that every once in a while where, you know, everything's clicking. You're getting your points to kind of get you back to where you were. So, yeah, for me, a, a minus day for Matty D. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'll, uh, I'll stay around that range. I got to say uh, B-plus for Matty D. Uh, hell of a performance. Yeah, he picked up some stage points. Um, we saw him. like He has ran so well with his 21 and at short tracks. I mean, we almost saw him get the win at uh, Bristol last year with the 95. So, yeah, him and short tracks are really well. So, I got to go B-plus just because we know that he can do a little bit better on the short tracks. Matt Benedetto all of last year had seven top tens, and we're only like ten races in, and he's already got three. So I, I definitely expect a really good season out of him. All right, so moving on. My fourth driver I have here is the driver of the number four, Kevin Harvick. So Kevin Harvick finished P15 in this race, so there were reports that he had that battery that died. Just never seemed to happen. The battery never seemed to go. He was up there fighting early on in the race, and then towards the end he kind of just – quietly fell back a little bit and this is uh i was reading up on this for harvick this is like his first time finishing out of the top 11 in like 15 straight races or something like that so oh. harvick's consistency kind of went away for him but 
he he's already in the playoffs, so this this doesn't hurt him too bad. But that's a solid C plus day for Kevin Harvick. Uh, he was fast early, and then the battery issue kind of hurt him in the end. So I got to give him a C. Finish in fifteenth. That's just not where we're used to seeing Kevin Harvick run. So we'll go we'll go Mike and Dalton on this one. All right, you got to get me in this too because it Actually, is. Actually, you know what? No, no, no. I'll, go, I'll let Ian have a say in this one. We'll go. We'll go Ian and Dalton on this one. All right. All right. I just I want to start off. I'm gonna give Kevin Harvick an A because he had the wheel the hell out of that car. He had so many issues going on with it. Uh, I don't know if you guys saw the tweet from Rodney Childers. Rodney Childers said, "Can't believe we ran 450 laps with no alternator. Driver turned off every single fan off and roasted himself to keep us going, along with saving brakes for 450 laps with no brake fans. Can't believe we made it. Great car uh, for the first two stages, though." So he was going through hell. He was overheating in that car and he had so many issues and yeah, he didn't get the best finish in the world, but hell 15th place finish for all the hell he had to go for a plus effort, maybe a C for the team just for not, you know, getting everything right with the battery and just every problem that he had with the four car. All right. Yeah. Uh, I'm not the biggest Kevin Harvey fan, but I have to give him an A also uh, for that performance he did with, with no alternator. You know, as uh, Stuart Haas Racing kind of, uh, kind of was like Joe Gibbs Racing this weekend. You know, Joe Gibbs Racing brought no brakes to the track, and seems like Stuart Haas Racing didn't bring any batteries to the track either. Because uh, Eric Alvarola had the same issue as well, but unfortunately he wasn't able to recover. But for Kevin Harvey to go through all that and still come up with the finish he did, I got. I got. I got to give him credit. That's mighty, mighty impressive. So, let's go ahead and give him an A minus on that. All right. All right. Sounds good. All right. Last driver. I, I kind of feel like we got to talk about him and his performance last night. My last driver is the forty-three of Bubba Wallace. Bubba Wallace had himself a career night. We know he walked away eleventh, but there were times where that forty-three car looked like the fastest car on the track because he was just he was just moving guys out of the way, and they even had they. Had a minute row down their pit stop for the rest of the race, but the boys just fought through it. They still had a great pit stop at the end. His car kind of faded at the end of the race, but Bubba in the long run, he really started to turn it on there in those like last 10 laps or so. And yeah, well, he was like 15th at one point with like 20 something to go. And then he, he just turned on the jets. He even said it post race that long, that long, once that long run speed started to kick in, he started to take off. But yeah. Solid 11th place performance with everything that's going on with Bubba Wallace and in the NASCAR community uh, and what the car that he was driving. So Mike and Ian on this one. All right. Um, so for, in my opinion, that, that's a solid A day all the uh-huh. way around. Stage point, stage one, stage point, stage two. And not just like clip to the very end of the stage points, like healthily in the middle. Uh, was it six stage points for uh, P6 or P5 and then five stage points for uh, P5 or P6 and stage two. So he'd get 11 stage points on top of the day with just missing the top 10. And honestly, he would have had the top 10. He, he was around Jimmy Johnson until Cole Custer mm-hmm. got yeah. involved. It was, uh, I think it was 15 one thousandths of a second between Jimmy and Bubba for that 10th yeah. place finish. And he would have had Custer not involved. He had him cleared, but then, you know, he got kind of crushed came into the lane there and ended up making it like a three wide deal when it really didn't need to be. These guys are racing for position and you're just riding around at this point. Don't really know what we're doing there. 41, but that's a different conversation. Um, yeah. Like I said, you know, with everything going on, Bubba taking the stand that he has, you know, for African-Americans, the African-American NASCAR community. Um, he's the one who led the charge on removing Confederate flags from NASCAR and its facilities. He needed to have a big day. He knew it. He delivered. That 43 car, if he comes out and he runs like 23rd here, kind of is a pretty moot point and, you know, not the greatest look. But he comes out and he dominates, has a great race. Um, You know, for what his equipment is to where he performed today, that's just an unbelievable job by him as a driver. For me, that's an A. Yeah, I'll go with a solid A with you there. Uh, Yeah, Bubba. Ran the wheels off that thing. Probably around the hardest track on the NASCAR circuit. So, yeah. And and that's where he got his first ever truck win, too. So, he definitely knows that track. That's for sure. And uh, he won that first truck race in a Wendell Scott paint scheme, too. So, that was pretty cool. 
But uh, yeah, I got I got to give Bubba an A for his effort. I mean, eleventh place, and he picked up some stage points. Hell yeah, Bubba, let's go A plus. And uh, I I I'm sorry to steal the spotlight, but I, I kind of want to have a say in this too. It's just that yeah, there was so much hype going into Bubba Walls for this weekend's race. I mean, like like Mike and Ian just said, the spotlight was on him for not just NASCAR, but the mainstream media all around for, you know, what he's doing with the Confederate flags, uh, speaking out for Black Lives Matter. And also, Martinsville has to be, like, if, if you want to pick an underdog pick for Martinsville, it has to be Bubba Wallace. Because like you said, him getting his first truck series win there back in, what, 2014, 2015, something like that. And, I mean, it would have been a very disappointing day if Bubba would have went out there and finished his regular 23rd spot. So, Oh my gosh, people are calling me right now. I'm sorry. Uh, anyway, so uh, so yeah, I got to give Bubba Wallace an A on that one too. He he really just dis- he did not disappoint. And another thing, there was a lot of people laying eyes on him. There were a lot of new fans tuning in just for him. For like I said, what he's done. So it was really really important that he went out there and showed an impressive day. But I mean, I wish I wish he had a top ten. But you know, I mean, he gave it all he could. So you know, got to give an A for effort. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We had like eyes. We had like Deion Sanders, LeBron James. We Alvin had so Kamara. many. Yeah, we Al- had my so boy Alvin Kamara, baby. Yeah, we had so many eyes on the sport last night, and that is amazing. I think NASCAR made the best move that they could do. So fantastic yeah. move. Hopefully, we're moving back into the main mainstream light. Yeah, yeah, okay. exactly. Just to touch on again, and I agree with Dalton wholeheartedly here. It's not only to have that performance, you know in a bubble, but to have that performance and drive that way, knowing what was on the line, it's like, that's the kind of stuff that makes you realize like, dude, Bubba really can drive. Like there was a lot of pressure on him here to have a good performance. And that was one of his best performances probably since Daytona or Indy. So. Absolutely. All right, boys. Well, that's all I really got to say for you. So class dismissed, but can I please have the drivers of Matt Kenseth and Denny Hamlin stay after we're going to have to have a nice long talk in here, but other than that, <laughs> dismissed. Buddy, I think we're going to have to have your Wi-Fi in detention, too, because you have been. <laughs> uh, oh, Lordy, yeah. We're going to have to see <laughs> your Wi-Fi. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I'm talking about I'm talking I'm to you, LTE Professor. Right. You're talking about uh, you uh, uh, me. <laughs> no, sorry, but we're going to have we're, we're gonna we're gonna have to see your router in detention, bud. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I think that'll do uh, it for the stock car spectacle. I'm Ian Jordson. I'm Mike Gamble. I'm Nick Kinsel. <laughs> I'm <all right. laughs> I'm Nick Kinsel. <laughs> right now, I don't know what you guys are talking about. <laughs> Oh my god. Yes. Uh, if you want to talk about people going in and out, it's you, Ian. All three of you have been going out. Oh bullshit. Hey, watch your language, man. Yeah, okay, that's yeah. because your Wi-Fi is terrible. That's why we're all going out I'm on you. I'm not on Wi-Fi. I'm not on Wi-Fi. I have the best data out of all four of us probably. Uh, so I don't even want to hear that. Doesn't that's really that's look it. like it, bud. It doesn't look like it. <laughs> <laughs> oh my! Yeah. This is like the light my you get out like uh, no Verizon, man. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> right. I need to finish this. So, oh my god! First and foremost, yes, Nick's data and wireless router both in detention with the professor. I I don't see it, man. <laughs> yeah, you don't see it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. What you to say. <laughs> All right, everyone. Thanks for watching. Make sure to follow Dalton on Twitter and Instagram. He's got some great accounts. Make sure to go follow him. Uh, if you are a Kyle Bush fan, you will love it. I wouldn't say you would love it if you're a Joey or Dale Jr. fan, though. But yeah, uh, <laughs> That's right. That's right. Yeah. Make sure to follow our good buddy Patrick Cotto on the Cotto's Mojo on Twitter and Instagram. You can follow us on Twitter and Instagram as well. So thanks for watching, guys. Make sure to check out for our new shows coming up this week. Yeah.